What's going on, everyone? Hope everybody enjoyed the weekend, man. Hope the family is good. Hope the health is good. Hope you are all in good spirits. We had a lot of action over the weekend. I didn't catch all of the fights, especially the Friday fights. I was out and about. But Saturday, you know, I was there. So all that stuff, man. So let's... um. Well, one, let's give a shout out to Amanda Serrano, 12-round fight. She did her thing. She dominated that fight, made history again. You know, we know how good Serrano is. I'm not sure how many years she is going to have left in boxing, but man, if she decides to retire tomorrow, I mean, she's already done enough to help move the, the sport forward in women's boxing. Man. So shout out to her and her victory and what she can do. Hopefully now we get to see 12 rounds for the women moving forward let's talk about fabio wardley versus david adelaide what did we think of the fight there was a lot of back and forth in the comment section of this video when i did the breakdown of their video man you know a lot of people had fabio a lot of people had david adelaide 50 50 but when the fight started what did you think what did you see let me know in the comment section below i thought it was very clear to see man adelaide was a little hesitant Right, like he didn't really want to engage. He was on the back foot quite a bit. Wardley was more controlled, more composed, and wasn't trying to force the fight, man. He knew he was going to get his opportunity, right? And he was going to make a count when it happened. I thought this was going to be, I didn't think it was going to be an exciting fight, honestly. I thought it was going to kind of play out like how it did. Sometimes when you have two big heavy punchers, man, it doesn't always equal out to the exciting knockout that we expect and anticipated. Even though Fabio did win by stoppage, man, it was just interesting because it, it not a lot was happening very early on and even leading up to the stoppage. But what was interesting to me, man, was Adelaide looked like he didn't want to get hit, right? Like he looked like he just didn't really want any parts of it, even though everything leading up to him showed that he was the more physical persona and presence. When they got into the ring, it wasn't like that, right? Wardley was the one who looked confident, who looked poised, who looked the more prepared fighter. I guess that's the better word. He looked more prepared for this moment, or as it just felt like David Adelaide, he looked like he man, kind of forgot who he was inside the ring, man. I was expecting a much more confident David Adelaide, but it it didn't play out like that. And we saw, of course, Fabio Wardley got the stoppage. But, man, it was a great win for him, man. And I think Fabio Wardley's... Uh, He's learning inside the ring in real time, and, and, and that's a good thing. It's a great thing, and he is improving, and he's improving at a very quick rate, man. So who would you like to see Fabio Wardley fight next? Let me know in the comment section below. What did you think of David Adelaide? Where does he go next? Let me know in the comment section below. Oh, Shockey Foster. Let's move on there. Oh, Shockey Foster versus Rocky Hernandez. Yes, that ring was pretty small. That was a bunch of people's questions when we talked about that video. A lot of you said, well, I'm not going to say a lot. A good portion of you said, man, Akeem, like I hear what you're saying, man, but man, it's going to be tough for Shockey Foster to get a win in Mexico. And I, I, I agree. I knew it was going to be tough, but I'm like, man, Oshaki can come down there and get the job done. But then they tried to rob my guy, Oshaki. <laughs> One of the refs had him losing every single round, bro. At some point, like, you not even a judge anymore. You just a hater, dog. Like, you didn't give Oshaki Foster one round? Rocky won every single round on your card, every single one, no close, no debating. He won every single round. That was crazy to me. But the interesting part too, like throughout that fight, man, man, Hernandez's pressure was crazy. I mean, you, you know what he's about, but man, he, he, he really brought it. And even though he was bringing the pressure, not all of his shots were landing. And Oshaki was evading some of those shots, but he wasn't throwing enough back. And you could kind of see in his mannerisms, right, when, when the ref was breaking him up for holding, he would be talking to Oshaki and not really saying anything to Rocky, right? And it was starting to wear on him because he was just like, man, what's going on? Like, what's with all this? Like, why is he getting 
all this love and I'm here getting nothing and I'm the champion. Like his mannerisms was starting to be disrupted a little bit, man. He would go to his corner, coaches would be talking to him, but he was kind of looking through them and it was, the frustration was there and you could see in his mannerisms and as the fight was going on, some of those rounds kind of looked the same. A lot of pressure being brought by Rocky with not a lot of return fire from Oshaki Foster, even though not all of those shots were connecting. But man, that 11th round was crazy. Best round of boxing in 2023. Just that round alone. Man, Foster had Hernandez hurt. And it looked like he was about to close out the show it looked like he was about to close out the show that it was about to be over with until rocky hernandez caught oshaki with the shot that backed him up and he was the one pressing the pace and it was it was crazy because it was later in the fight and you kind of got the notion and the sense that they were kind of saying man oshaki needs to stop Hernandez to win this fight. And so when the 12th round started, man, I was just like, man, I, I don't know how the scorecard is going, but it does look like Oshaki's going to need to do something, right? Because you just never know, man. And sure enough, man, he was able to get it done with 30, 40 seconds left to go. And he was able to close out the show and get the win. And then come to find out that the judges had everybody had Hernandez winning the fight. And that was crazy. It brought that much more drama and electricity to the fight. Shout out to Oshaki Foster, man, for how you won that fight. Because the odds was stacked against you. Not just in the ring. But outside of the ring where those judges and officials were as well, man, they were trying to play my man Oshaki, but he was able to get the job done. Man, I thought Rocky Hernandez, if he would have just tied him up in that last 30 seconds instead of being too tough for his own good, if he would have tied him up, he would have won that fight. He would have won that fight if he would have just hugged him up, bear hug, and tied him up, man. So good fight. Very, very, very great 11th round. Uh, judging in boxing is crazy. We already know that, man. But, geez, 11 rounds to one person? Man, that's crazy. But we move on. What did you think about the fight? How did you have it going up until the stoppage, where does Rocky Hernandez go from here? Where does Ashaki Foster go from here? Now, let's close out with Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou. What did you think of that fight? Interesting. First and foremost, man, I don't know what they got going on over there at Saudi Arabia, but the budget that they have for their performance and from what they put on, yo, know, crazy amount of money was being spent there it took a while for this fight to get going they were milking that time like crazy but then the fight starts man and even watching the press conference and and, and the weigh-in i asked myself man like how serious is tyson fury really taking this fight tyson fury is always a big guy right that's he's six nine like that's crazy but he was not in shape by no means it looked like Yo, he looked like he only started training for it maybe like a month before the fight. Like, he didn't look good, man. Like, he's 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 looked much sharper and in more physical shape in previous fights before. I don't know how seriously he took Francis Ngannou. Tyson Fury is usually always able to, to, to use his size and his frame and weigh down his opponents. He's usually 25, 30, sometimes 40 pounds more than his opponents. But Francis Ngannou is 271 pounds of solid muscle. He was much stronger than Tyson Fury, right? And he couldn't just use that same physicality against Francis Ngannou. So Francis Ngannou really won that fight, even though he lost the fight. Yeah, I thought he did get outboxed and, 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 and Tyson Fury got the win, right? But Francis Ngannou was not supposed to come in and do as well as he did against who some people consider is one of the best heavyweights uh, ever. So we weren't expecting, a lot of people weren't expecting Francis Ngannou to put up that type of fight, man. And then the knockdown happened and things got really interesting. But a couple of things that stuck out to me in that fight, man, Tyson Fury, he kept trying to fix his trunks. I don't know what that was about. Right? He kept trying to blow his nose with his gloves. I don't know what that was about. And he kept 
like putting his hand in front of his face and wiping something off, right? Just like distract. He just didn't really look locked in and dialed into me. And then when he hit Francis Ngannou cleanly, it didn't even really detour Francis Ngannou that much. Interesting fight, man. Um, I think if anybody knows Francis Ngannou, you know what he's done in the in the UFC, right? I think he's got the Guinness World Record for the heaviest punch, hardest punch. And he's 271 pounds of solid muscle. If he hits any heavyweight, there's a good chance that they are going to drop. So the knockdown wasn't a crazy thing for me. It's heavyweight boxing. Anything can happen. But I don't think anybody expected him to do as well as he did in that fight. But I was very disappointed in Tyson Fury, man. If he would have lost that fight and I felt like he would have took the fight seriously, okay, the better man won. But he is the better man in boxing. But he, to me, just didn't seem like he took the fight seriously. And it showed. And now... We're not going to see that Usyk fight on the 23rd. He did get dropped, man. And he got landed cleanly. His eyes was black and blue, right? So we're not going to see that fight. Um, a disappointing performance from Tyson Fury, man. But you know what's not disappointing is the bank account. He, 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 he really won. You know what I'm saying? He really won. Both men really won. But disappointing. We're not going to see that Usyk fight, man. But uh, not the fight that I expected at all but at the same time man in the heavyweight division anything can happen but disappointing performance from tyson fury man now we wait to see what happens next with him and Usyk. but what were your thoughts on this fight let me know your thoughts of the fight was there a fight that stuck out to you this weekend what was the highlight of the fight for you let me know in the comment section below